In this video, I'm gonna give some renovation advice for couples doing DIY projects to keep you both out of the doghouse and keep your project on track. Find out how, coming up next. What's going on, folks? Kendall here with Winos for Pros and Joes, helping you simplify the renovation and remodeling process. On this channel, we do hands-on product tool and gear reviews, as well as renovation tip and strategy videos like this one. So if you're interested in renovation, remodeling, repair, and real estate, then subscribe because this channel is for you. So today's video is to help commemorate our Valentine's Day weekend. Today's Sunday, so we're technically still in the weekend. So I have a reason to make this video. And it's appropriate because we're gonna be talking about doing DIY projects as a couple. So when I say couple, you don't necessarily have to be romantically involved with the other person. Or frequently that's how it shakes out, but it can also be working with family members, friends, coworkers, etc. These tips are gonna help you regardless of what the scenario is. So let's jump into it. The first point that I wanna make with regards to doing projects as a couple is to make sure on the front end that you evaluate the project properly to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. And the first thing that you wanna look at the project for is you wanna weigh its level of difficulty. And when we're talking about difficulty, there's two different ways that I categorize difficulty. One way that a project can be difficult is that it can be very labor intensive. And the second way that a project can be difficult is with the steepness of the performance learning curve. So let's first start with the labor. So a project can be very labor intensive and still be relatively easy to complete. For example, if we talk about doing a landscape project, let's say that you're going to be removing mature shrubs from the perimeter of a house, and you're gonna be going back with some new shrubbery, you're gonna be adding in some fill soil, as well as maybe even some landscape paper or mesh, and then you're gonna go back with your new mulch or rocks or stones or whatever you have. So from the outset, we can determine that the level of labor on this is going to be high. You're gonna be doing a lot of sweating and a lot of work. However, in order to achieve a quality result, it should not be that difficult for you to do because the project is pretty straightforward once you know the steps to take. Additionally, if there's any problems that arise during that project, it's pretty simple to go back and fix them. For example, if you've got a plant that's not quite seated completely level and straight up, it's easy to go back and straighten it up. Or if you've got an area where you need a little bit more soil, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you've got some mulch that needs to be added, you can always add on some mulch later on down the line. So you don't have those steep penalties for not getting it exactly right the first time. So that's number one. So the next type of difficulty that you have is going to be the steepness of the learning curve for performance. And look at this in two different ways. Number one, how easy is it going to be to actually get a high level finish or quality work with limited experience, if any? That's the first question you've got to answer for yourself. And then the second question is, if you make errors and mistakes during the first process or first go round, how easy is it going to be for you to be able to go back and correct those things down the line or shortly thereafter? Okay, and I'm gonna give you an example that you probably wouldn't think I would use. So an interior paint project is actually a project that I would classify as having a steep learning curve with regards to being able to perform it at a very high level. And the reason for this is simple. There are several tasks that you have to be able to perform proficiently in order for the project to come out right. And so the rolling piece of the walls, that's probably gonna be the easiest part if you're gonna be rolling. However, when it comes to doing things like your trim work, such as cutting in where your wall meets your ceiling there at the top, as well as doing your cut-ins and trim work around your door casings, actually painting up the trim where it actually looks good, as well as painting baseboards and things like that, where they meet the wall as well as where they meet the floor. These are gonna be more high detail skill levels that are gonna be required to be able to do this at a high level. And you need to be able to be aware of that on the front end to know how to address that as you decide whether or not you wanna pursue that project. Another thing that you have to be aware of with doing interior paint projects is the amount of prep work that is required on the front end to help ensure that the project goes smoothly. And so if you skip over steps during the prep work, it can raise its ugly head throughout the project. And so the other thing about that we mentioned before is that the issues that you can create doing a poor job of painting are a lot more difficult to correct than doing something like a landscape project. So if you've got runs and things on the wall, let's say you've done a poor job of doing your rolling and you've got some areas where you've got major lap marks, you've got runs in the paint and things like that, and you're trying to go back and sand and, and trim um, tall areas on the wall down or things like that, these things are gonna be more difficult for you to do, particularly as a novice, to be able to get this project back on track and to make it look good. And the other thing that I wanna say with regards to paint is that many people 
choose to do paint projects because the barrier to entry is very low. And so you can procure most of your tools and things like that for a relatively low cost relative to doing other projects, as well as the fact that there's not a high level of risk in doing a paint project short of doing something like falling off a ladder or something like that. So people choose paint projects relatively frequently. However, when we're talking about your steepness of learning curve and your ability to perform the project at a high level, the main thing we wanna be concerned with is how is the project gonna look on the end? The goal is to have a high quality finish on the back end. So when you have your friends and family come over and you tell them, hey, I painted this myself, you want them to actually be surprised when you tell them that versus them looking at the work and being able to pretty much judge based on the, the way that it looks overall that you probably did it yourself and did not pay a professional. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's move on to the next factor. So the next factor that you want to consider when you're trying to select a project is going to be your timeline. So frequently DIY projects stem from upcoming events that are going to be held at the home. So if you're going to be having a graduation party or you're going to be having a birthday party or any type of event at your home, frequently this is how these projects become hatched out. And so this is fine and this is normal. The main thing that you want to keep in mind is to make sure that you have yourself enough time to be able to finish that project without getting too stressed out. Additionally, you also want to have a plan B, which is going to be what are you going to do if you aren't able to finish that project and trying to find out or figure out during the process or up front where you can have a nice clean stopping point where you don't have your house completely torn apart and still be trying to figure out how to host an event. Another thing to keep in mind with regards to having a project and the deadline is going to be make sure that you and your partner are on the same page with regards to what has to be done and how you're going to do it. Because one thing that you can expect is that tempers can flare up and you can have some tense moments when you guys have your backs against the wall trying to hit that deadline and make sure that everything comes off and everything looks good. So let's move on to the next point. So the next factor that we want to consider when looking at a DIY project is going to be your availability to work. This is going to be true for you as well as your partner, friend, coworker, etc. You guys need to be able to sit down and look at your schedules and have a realistic conversation with regards to how many hours and what hours you actually be able to work on this project. The reason for this is simple. If you start out with a project and everything is supposed to be 50-50 and then days go by, weeks go by, and you start to see that one person is doing the lion's share of the work and the other person is kind of more or less popping in and out, this can create resentment over time and it's something that can be avoided because frequently if you look at your schedule and timetable and have a realistic conversation, We'll both come to the conclusion that, hey, one of us is going to end up doing the majority of the work and potentially try to figure out a way for the other person who's not able to work as much to still be very impactful with, with regards to being able to get that project to move forward. So the next factor that you want to consider when you're trying to select a DIY project as a couple is going to be skills. And skills are where the rubber meets the road. You want to try to figure out as quickly as possible what your strengths and weaknesses are and what the strengths and weaknesses of your partner are because theoretically once you know that and have determined that you can kind of divvy up the work accordingly now this is of course theory in some situations you both may be essentially on the same skill level and it may not matter as much however frequently on most projects and this is true for as pros typically if you've got two professionals working on a job one pro is going to have a higher level of skill than the other it's just the way that it is and so this is going to be normal and you just want to kind of make sure that you have the person who's doing the most high level skill work to be working on that while the other person can more or less assist with the things that also come up during the project. So on the flip side, if you're taking on a project where neither one of you have a high level of skill for the task that you're going to be taking on, you just need to go into that project knowing to expect that you're going to have some difficulties. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to redo and you're probably going to have situations where you're going to have some tense moments and that the project may not come out 100% perfect, but it will at least be a learning experience and hopefully you all's friendship or relationship can grow from that experience. So the next factor to consider when you're trying to select a DIY project as a couple is going to be make sure that you have a lifeline in place if possible. And this is just like the game show. You know that two heads are better than one and sometimes three heads is even better than two heads. And so both of you have a limited level of experience doing a particular task be very helpful if you're able to identify someone on the front end that has a more of a professional experience in doing the particular task that you're trying to do who could come in and weigh in and give an opinion on something if you get in a situation where you don't know which way to go you're able to call this person that can come out and take a look at it or potentially send them pictures or video and things like that and they can weigh in and help you make the appropriate decision so that you can minimize the number of missteps that you have on the project 
to keep things on track and keep the project moving forward. So the next factor that you should consider when you're trying to select a DIY project as a couple is what I like to call when the sugar runs out. And there's something about doing manual labor and working with your hands that just helps bring emotion out. And this is not always going to be a good thing, but it is a very normal thing with regards to doing renovation projects and things like that. And it's something that you need to be aware of. And it's just something that happens even on professional job sites and things like that. Tempers can flare. One person may be very vocal about how they feel about the other person's work, etc., etc., etc. And you just need to be aware that this is something that can happen and it frequently does happen. So that if you can anticipate that it's going to happen on the front end, both of you all can kind of put on more of a thick skin or a coat of armor so that you can go into this project ready to kind of you know beat each other up a little bit and be ready to kind of move on move past that as you're going through the project so that's another thing to consider another factor that i want to mention that you should also keep in mind when you're evaluating a diy project as a couple builds on the last point and this is a point that i like to call the barker versus the barkey and so frequently you're going to have one person who's going to be a lot more vocal on a project and they may be the one who's going to be criticizing and critiquing the other person's work and frequently that person is probably going to be the person who has the higher level of skill in the project that typically is just how it works however the person who is the barker needs to also make sure that they are giving words of encouragement as well as trying to actually show the other person how to do things if it's possible so you don't want to beat up on the other person so much that they walk away from the job because then you're doing the project by yourself and it's no longer a couple's project additionally this can also lead to you having some indirect effects to your non-project relationship so just keep that in mind another factor to consider when you're trying to select a diy project as a couple is going to be have realistic expectations about the level of engagement and participation from the other member and so what i mean by this is that some projects are going to be very skill oriented and that means that if you've got one person who has a high level of skill and the other person has a lower level of skill you may have to rely heavily on the person who has the high level of skill to do the vast majority of the work and the other person may be kind of limited to doing very small tasks additionally you may have situations where skill is not the factor but it's really more so a level of engagement as being the main factor what i mean by this is sometimes it sounds good to take on a couple's project but when an application arises it doesn't actually work out the same way and so you may have one person who's totally engaged and wants to move forward and just work 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 and the other person you can hardly keep them in the room where the project is going on this is something that you have to be able to monitor and evaluate and be able to make that judgment call early on because if you don't it's one of those things where you're going to be constantly bumping heads trying to keep the person engaged who just really isn't interested in performing the project along with you and so the best thing to do with this is to more or less allow that person to do what they want to do sometimes it's good enough to just to have that person around keeping you company just have them kind of periodically check in on you to make sure that you're still alive back there or maybe you can even have that person run to the store occasionally to kind of get some supplies to make sure that you can kind of keep working and not lose time that way from going to do material runs and things like that so hopefully you found this video informative Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next one.